Hello everyone and welcome back to the next installment in this Isle 2 Storm Evic 1946 Iron Man series with the Soviet Union. Today we will finally be flying something other than the I-16. The I-16 treated as well in our time with her, but it is about time that we move on to greener pastures. Today we will be flying the LA-5 FN in the Battle of Kursk. And I'm kind of excited to start a new era in Maxi's flight career here in World War II. Now we are a Capitan, 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 Capitan. We are the head of the 176 IAP VVS with 32 kills. There is a, there is a, another ace here, Seposnikov. And I don't know if he's flying. He is flying with us. So we will be in good hands. So without further ado, let's read the little paragraph they have to preface this campaign. After this year's winter offensives, our forces have occupied a huge bulge in the front around Kursk. It is obvious the German leadership plans an attack on this bulge as the starting point for their summer offensive this year. Reasons unknown to us, however, this offensive has been delayed for almost two months now. This gave us the possibility to strengthen our forces in the Kursk Bulge to a point, and at, to the point, an attack cannot succeed. We expect the German forces, forces to attack anyway, though. So, the task of our air army will be to secure the defense against the southern German pincer. Our main task will be to secure air supremacy and to attack German tank and supply columns. So I'm guessing this, this is definitely not the southern bulge. This is the northern bulge, south of Oral. It looks like we will be intercepting German transport planes that are delivering supplies to Oral. This is interesting. This is going to be an inter cargo plane intercept mission. And it is beginning on July 4th, the first day of the Battle of Kursk. All right, let's take a look at the new aircraft we will be flying here, the LA-5FN. Now, this plane is significantly better than the I-16, at least in terms of speed and climbing potential. Obviously, the I-16 will always be goaded when it comes to turn rate, but... That is not all that matters in the realm of dogfighting during World War II. So, the LA-5. This boy is fast and can climb quickly at low altitudes compared to our German counterparts. Anything below 5,000 meters is, at the very least, even in terms of performance in regards to our German counterparts. If anything, we actually have better low altitude performance than our German contemporaries at this period. So that means we need to maintain engagements below 5,000 meters. We do not want to be venturing higher than that, and I don't think that any of our flight plans will have us uh, cruising at an altitude higher than 5,000 meters. But I just want to make note of that. The LA-5, also this variant, the LA-5FN, the F stands for, uh, it's a Russian word that stands for boosted, so the LA-5FN has a boosted engine, and the N stands for, I believe it is a different variant of the radial engine in the LA-5, it is a better version with about 150 more horsepower. And so, not only is the LA-5FN got a boosted engine, but it has a better engine. And at the end of the day, this is the best LA-5 variant that was ever produced and actually saw its first combat during the Battle of Kursk. So, oh, let me change this real quick. So, without further ado... Let's get into the cockpit of this bad boy and see what it's like. All right, here we are. So, 
unlike the i16, we actually have a cockpit that is enclosed. We do not have an open-air cockpit anymore. In addition, I would like to point out that the original LA-5 did not have rearward visibility like the LA-5F and the LA-5FN do. We get the luxury of a cockpit with 360 visibility. This will definitely help us out when it comes to dogfighting. Now, I expect our primary opponents to be 109G6s and FW190A6s which will prove to be formidable opponents. One thing I also need to keep note of is I am not flying an I-16 anymore and I cannot treat this plane like an I-16 or else I will end up dying because I'll probably pull too hard on the stick and snap stall or something up to that nature. So I really need to keep in mind that this is a much more conventional fighter aircraft than an I-16. I cannot roll and turn as hard as I could with an I-16. Instead, I have to fly this thing, you know, using energy and just with a lot more care. That out of the way. Let's take this bad boy off. There's a lot of torque in this plane, that's for sure. It's really loving to pull to the left. You also have an automatic gear, praise god. No longer do I have to spam click a button on the keyboard to raise and lower my gear. But yeah, I never double checked in the briefing to see what altitude we will actually be flying at for the intercept. Okay, it looks like 3000 meters is going to be our cruising altitude for this intercept which is amazing that is perfect for us we want to be flying at these altitudes i suspect we will be seeing uh junkers or junkers uh 52 cargo planes ju-52s and i am unsure of whether or not it will be escorted but i would expect some kind of Escort. Uh, yeah. With all that having been said, we'll see you guys at first contact. Alright, so I'm back here. We did not make contact with the enemy at the planned point. But in the briefing, they did say they were transporting materials to Oral. So I'm going to investigate. Especially since I am the Capitan now, and I have control over the entire flight. So yeah, we're going on an expedition here to Oral and see what's up, because we probably missed them or something. Yeah, before I skip ahead, I'd also like to mention that this plane's armament is quite interesting. There are no machine guns on this plane, simply two cannons with, I think, 300 rounds of ammunition. So we've really got to work on our marksmanship flying this plane here. But uh, that is all. I will see you if I make contact with anything. All right, we're back. One of my fellow pilots called out bombers nine o'clock. 
So I sent them all to attack the bombers. I don't really see where the bombers are yet, so I'm just gonna follow my boys and see where they go. But we should hopefully make contact with the enemy soon. See, they seem to be going this direction. Also, if you notice my left wing, part of it is damaged. I actually got shot by enemy flak near Oral. Which is most unfortunate. Wait a second, what is that? Why are there four dots over there? I don't know where they're going. Because I don't see any bombers over there. I am interested, however, to see what's going on over here. Why are there four dots? And where are we going? This is definitely very peculiar. A very peculiar first mission here. You know, those are all friendly. What's going on? What happens if I tell them to do that again? What? Now they don't... This is very odd indeed. I think this is about to be a wash. Wait... Four? So the other guys... Know where to get... Are you serious? Saw them going down this way or something. Okay. This is like a goose chase at this point, a wild goose chase. Like what? Who's 12 o'clock are we talking about? Somebody got- wait, what? <laughs> Those were the people I was just- oh. I am confused. Let's see. Oh yeah, yeah. Where did they all go? Like I'm also not trying to run out of gas doing this either. Yeah, this is a uh, weird mission. Alright, well. Looks like this is going to be a wash for me, at least. I'll see you guys when I'm making my first landing with the new LA-5.
We're landing here. Let's we'll start getting everything prepared. Yeah, no, I'm landing, buddy. Gotta watch out, there's trees of death right there. Don't want to hit those. Also gotta remember, I can't go as slow as the I-16 in this thing, or else I will stall to, to my uh, unfortunate fate. Dude, chill out. Okay. Bring it on. Down. Smooth. Bumpy, she's okay. Whoa, jeez. Somebody did not flatten out the runway here. All right, we'll just park her here. Let's take a look at the debrief. So... Literally nothing happened. The enemy lost one plane, but I don't even see it on the map. Is this one of those cases where the planes went off the map or something? I wouldn't be surprised. But definitely weird. Let's see what's happening next, I guess. Okay, it's going to be a combat patrol against enemy aircrafts. Okay, hopefully there will actually be contacts in this next mission. But, as always, thanks for joining me. And uh, I'll be sure to see you guys in the next one. Hopefully get to see some... Actual action. Jeez.